Senator Bernini? Virtually here, thank you. Senator Bernini present, Representative Brady? Present. Representative Brady present, Senator present. Brown? Senator Brown present, Representative Gray? Representative Gray present. Representative Gray present. Representative Osinski. Present. Representative Osinski present. Senator Pennyjohn. Senator Pennyjohn present. Senator Pennyjohn's present. Representative Ramon. Present. Representative Ramon present. Senator Townsend. Here. Senator Townsend present. Senator Walsh. Present. Senator Walsh present. Representative Williams. Present. present. Representative Williams present. Senator Sicola. Here. Here. Senator, Senator Sicola present. Representative Heffernan. Present. Representative Heffernan present. All present. Hey, as this is a um, virtual meeting, we will have Lonnie call the roll as we just did. We're, um, today, the com committee will begin updating details of the capital budget for fiscal year 2021. As a reminder, this committee will not vote on appropriation amounts other than transportation trust fund authorizations until after the June 17th DFAC meeting. We start this meeting with Denrec to go over the drainage project list. And if you would like to speak, how um, how did we raise hand? Can you raise your hand? Do we know how to tell people? Okay. The participants in the bottom right. Yeah. Okay. Just wanna, okay. So any questions before we get started? No, okay. So our, we're gonna start with um, Denrec presenting the 21st century drainage project list and which we need to approve in accordance with Title 29, Section 6102A of the Delaware Code. And I would like to um, call on Secretary of DENREC, Sean Garvin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the Bond Bill Committee, appreciate the opportunity to be here. As you know, the resource conservation and development projects are designed to enhance the health of communities by improving watershed and drainage infrastructure. As you all know, the RC&D fund originally uh, came, was funded from the 21st century fund dollars, uh, but more recently have been funded uh, through the bond bill. Uh, these projects are implemented in partnership between DENREC uh, and the three conservation districts. I do want to recognize uh, Marsha Fox, uh, who is on the call, um, and she is DENREC section administrator who oversees this program. Uh, we also have Kevin Donnelly, who is the district coordinator for the Newcastle uh, Conservation District joining us, and both of those will help answer any questions that you may have, uh, as well as Tim Riley, who is the uh, director of the uh, district coordinator for Kent uh, Conservation District and David Baird of Sussex Conservation District are, are both listening in. Um, as you may recall, back on March 5th, um, we gave a presentation to the bond bill committee uh, that went through and highlighted some recent projects that have been done uh, with our CND funding, uh, as well as uh, some projects that likely would be uh, put forward in the future. Uh, at that time, we were still compiling uh, the annual report, which contains the project lists uh, for the upcoming uh, fiscal year. Uh, that pro annual uh, report has been compiled and has been provided to the committee. Um, in that Appendix D is the 
uh, part of that annual report that highlights the projects that will be proposed uh, moving into the future. Uh, we have uh, 96 projects that are being proposed to be added to the list. Um, disregard the typo on page five that says 95 projects were, are being uh, added to the list. Uh, 75 of those projects are being added in uh, Newcastle, uh, 11 projects in Kent, uh, and 10 projects in Sussex. Um, the total estimated cost of all of these projects would be $105 million. Uh, after matching funds and current balance, it's about $86 uh, million. But as you well know, and we, we've talked about uh, numerous times over the last couple of years, um, we only have a bandwidth to do, you know, probably in the neighborhood of $5 million and recognizing this year being an absolutely different year than um, uh, whenever uh, the past years that we have we have talked about this, um, you know, we we obviously are, will look to see what um, gets appropriated, and uh, that is what we will uh, be looking to utilize. Um, we have in the past, it's been as I said, a partnership between between the three uh, districts. Um, Newcastle taking uh, a much uh, greater lead, uh, Denrec taking a greater lead in in Kent and Sussex. Uh, we've been working with both of those districts over the last uh, year, and as I underscored uh, on March 5th, uh, we've been working on uh, how do we come up with a, a process uh, to get more money directly to Kent and Sussex uh, so that they can do some of the, the smaller projects. Um, and earlier uh, this week, I signed uh, agreements with both Kent and Sussex that would provide them uh, with some additional um, uh, opportunities to do more of a lead on, on projects uh, and provide uh, some additional funding. And we will continue to, to work on those. Um, all four of us, the De uh, DENREC and the three districts uh, work on the pri prioritization of projects. And we focus on public safety, frequent flooding, status of property, uh, project property damage, ability to leverage additional funds, age of projects, ability to, uh, to get um, uh, agreement with landowners and so forth to determine um, what projects uh, move up. We have, with the addition, if the 96 projects are added, we will have 1,105 projects that are authorized on the RC and D list. Um, the benefit and the reason that we have so many projects is it gives us flexibility to uh, to readily move forward with projects, particularly ones that might move up the list because of the, the um, various um, factors that I just laid out. Um, and so uh, we're hopeful that um, we'll, you will adopt the, the project list that appears in Appendix D. Um, with that, I'm going to stop um, uh, and see if there are any questions uh, on the list, how we go about doing it, um, and so forth. And as I said, uh, Kevin Donnelly and Marsha Fox are, are on to help any questions that you might have. Do we have any questions for um, Secretary Garvin, Kevin Donnelly? I see a hand raised by Representative Kim Williams, Madam Chair. Representative Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair um, Kevin, um, could I get an update on Wild Cherry Lane, O Capitol Trail, and Washington Street, and then Absalom Jones? Uh, Kevin's on mute, Madam Chair. I think I've corrected it. So, uh, Ab Jones, we've got a revised estimate uh, for that project. Uh, we just got that uh, late last week. The cost is over $850,000 at this point, uh, depending on the scope of the work. If you do everything, 
detail than the estimate. Uh, you know, it could be phased where you just worked on uh, drainage in the front. Uh, that cost would be between you know, 160 to $200,000. Uh, the most expensive portion of that project is the upgrade and drainage system for the courtyard and the mechanical room. Uh, Washington Avenue, uh, we have a final engineering design prepared by the consultant. Uh, the delay has been trying to fit in uh, through all the existing uh, utilities on Old Capitol Trail. Uh, has really been, there's uh, existing water, sewer, electric, gas. So uh, navigating a pipe uh, beneath Old Capitol Trail and uh, out towards the Red Clay Creek has been an engineering challenge, but we have uh, final plans in our hands, uh, again, just recently representative. And finally, Old, old uh, uh, Wild Cherry is, uh, it's ready to go to bid. And, uh, you know, we've got the funding we needed and uh, that should be out to bid anytime soon. Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask an additional question? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, so Senator Walsh and I were talking, is there any way that we could do um, like a portion of Absalon Jones this year? We realized that the cost is substantial. Um, we had talked about possibly just doing the, the frontage, if that's possible, just to get something done this year. This year as in, uh, FY 2021 representative. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah. If we get some additional funding in uh, FY 21, yes, definitely we can do it this year. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Madam Chairman, seeing no other hands raised, uh, would you like a motion to accept uh, the list as presented? Yes. So moved. Second. When we have a second, please say your, uh, uh, your uh, name. Second, Senator Townsend, second. Okay. Lonnie, please call the roll. Senator Bonini? Yes. Senator Bonini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Representative Vasinski, yes. Senator Pennyjohn? Yes. Senator Pennyjohn, yes. 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 Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. 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 Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Scola? Yes. Senator Scola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative yes. Heffernan, yes. 12, yes. Motion, motion passes. Okay, at this point, I believe we can turn it over to DelDOT so they can go over their project list. And I would just like to note that all of the documents um, that we are voting in today are already posted onto the legislative website, so they are publicly accessible to anyone. Um, and they're also in all of the committee members' binders. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you Ruth Ann. Am I on? I'd, I'd like to turn it over 
we're now moving to Del Dot. We'd like Del Dot, we're gonna Secretary Cohn and Deputy Secretary Nicole Majeski. Del Dot is gonna present their proposed project and paving list, rule 12 updates, and go over their epilogue, boilerplate epilogue sections. And take it away, Jen. Representative, if I could just interrupt for a minute. Representative yes, Gray please. has his hand up. Oh, represent Representative Gray. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. There uh, is uh, Secretary Garvin still still available. Um. It, Representative, I believe he has already disconnected. Yeah, so well, we can I, get him. I'll, I'll contact him. him. I had a question for him about uh, navigational aids. Uh, for uh, for inland bays, and I, I uh, I'll get back to him later. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Jen, Secretary Cohen. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Perfect. Good. Um, Ruthann, um, were you going to put the slides up that we were going to go through? Yeah. Coming right up. Thank you. So um, thank you. It's actually good to see all of all of your faces. Um, we wanted to go over just a few a few slides just to let you know where the Transportation Trust Fund stands um, during you know this this trying time with with COVID. Um, we did take a pretty large revenue hit as well, um, and we'll go over that. But I, before we bring the slides up, I really just wanted to give a huge shout out to to all of Team Belldot. Um, while everyone was hunkering and sheltering in place. Um, we were working like gangbusters out on the roadways, <clears throat> and I'm sure any of you who've been out have seen all of that, all of the work that we've been able to actually get a little more aggressive on and accelerate during during the last few months. Ready whenever you are, Ruthann. Yay. Okay, so um, we can go ahead and Ruthann, just go ahead and skip to the third slide. It just kind of highlights, you guys know what our, our mission and vision uh, is. <clears throat> so some of the impacts on Bill dot finances. Um, we were very lucky, as you guys know, we had a, uh, a non-eventful um, snow season. Uh, we didn't have hardly any. I think we had one, one episode and that was it. Um, so we were able to use our emergency uh, snow and storm contingency fund to fund the expenses that we experienced with uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> And as you can see, um, we've spent around 700,000 um, and we've got some more additional uh, dollars coming out of that fund. Um, but again, we did have a surplus in that fund so we were able to, to use that. So we were very, very lucky. So um, as you guys know, we, traffic was down for the last three months. Uh, I think at the height in early April, it was down 50% uh, during the week and then about 75 to even 80% on the weekends. Um, so that was a significant hit to uh, motor fuel tax to tolls um, to all of our all, all of our revenue streams. Um, at the most recent defect, uh, our revenue loss for this current fiscal year is 63.1 million, and that uh, grows another 24.7 million as we go into fiscal year 2021. 20, uh, so um, my fantastically amazing, awesome finance team, uh, we came up with some solutions that I want to share with you. Um, one of the big things that we wanted to ensure is that all of the construction projects that you see and that are happening right now continue. Um, the construction industry is one of the only non-medical or food industry related uh, groups out there that are really holding up our economy. So um, we really want to make sure that we continue to do that, continue to keep those jobs in place and those projects moving. So in the first round of the CARES Act, um, FTA, the Federal Transit Administration, provided funding for transit agencies across the country. Um, so Delaware's share of that CARES Act um, funds for transit was 61.2 million. Um, and as you guys know, every year, the Transportation Trust Fund subsidizes the uh, transit um, at somewhere between 80 and 90 million every year. So what this FTA CARES Act funds allowed us to do is to, instead of subsidizing uh, the DTC with Transportation Trust Fund dollars, we were able to use um, those CARES Act funds to fund a DTC um, for the next uh, going in almost almost 18 months. So that gave us a $50.4 million credit with, for lack of a better term to the Transportation Trust Fund. So that is a one-time deal. Um, you know, there's conversations going on all over the country right now 
Um, if transit does come back, uh, what is that going to look like? To put it in context for you guys, our paratransit uh, activities were down 85 85%, and our fixed ridership was, was down significantly as, as well. Um, and train service was you know, pretty much gone. Um, so will that rebound? We don't know, uh, but we are working on plans uh, to see what that's gonna, gonna look like in the future. But uh, also a huge shout out to all of the people at DTC. Those bus drivers, were still, they were still out providing essential trips to all of those essential employees that rely on transit. So that was part of the solution for our, our revenue deficit. The additional solution that we have is that we are going to be going out um, for additional bond sales in August, and we'll go over that um, when we go into the epilogue language. So um, between the CARES Act one-time funds, the additional borrowing, and then we were also able to uh, federalize more of our projects, and I'll explain that also as we go to Appendix A. So, but with that, I mean, that is a short-term solution that gets us through the next 18 months. Um, the fiscal year 22 through 26 impacts, we, we, just, we just don't know right now. Um, we're working on that, but uh, the revenue, our revenue streams in the future are still, you know, uh, we're, we're not sure how fast things are going to rebound. Um, and also the other thing that's kind of hanging out there is the, uh, the federal stimulus. Um, transportation has been included in some versions and not versions, uh, not other versions, but we are looking for a revenue backstop uh, for what revenue losses in the next round. Um, but we'll have to wait and see how that, how that plays out in Washington. So um, <clears throat> one-time CARES Act funding, uh, additional borrowing, federalizing additional projects is how we were able to continue um, delivering our program as, as planned. We move to the next slide, again. Thank you. So this is the chart that you guys are all used to seeing. This is the sources of, of our funds. Um, looks a little bit busier uh, this year because we added that CARES Act one-time uh, supplement to the Transportation Trust Fund. Um, and these are all of our uh, DFAC revenue uh, uh, sources of funds approved dollars. So a little over a, a billion dollars. Um, and those, those other sources. And as you guys know, um, motor fuel tax took a hit because the miles traveled were, have been reduced. Um, DMV revenues, um, I don't know how to explain DMV revenues, um, but they're still pretty strong. The auto dealers were not originally in, in, included in the essential um, businesses, um, but they did get their, their waiver and they were, they're still selling cars. So um, that's an anomaly. Tolls, um, you know, that they were also down because of the pandemic. And if you guys recall, um, we stopped taking cash in our toll booths, um, and we are doing that pay by pay by plate. So it's a little bit clunky, but we're hoping to collect those revenues um, on the back end over over time. So that's our sources of funds. And um, the other thing that I want to uh, really this and this was going to happen pre COVID um, is that you see that asterisk at the bottom of that slide. Um, we had always planned on uh, going and, and getting a Garvey bonds for the I ninety five project um, for the main reason that it's going to suck up so much of our federal program. Um, that we wanted to be able to span it out over over several years. So we're going to be doing that over three years, um, very similar to what we did with US 301. But that was going to happen prior to COVID. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, next slide, Ruthann. So this is um, this is what I wanted to, to talk to you guys about. The additional borrowing, you know, we, we've been very, very proud of how uh, you know fiscally responsible that we've been, um, at, I know for the last, at least the last six years, um, to keep our debt service as a percentage of revenue below 20%. Um, with this additional borrowing that we're going to be doing in August, um, we will be going over that, um, probably 21, I think 22% at one point. Um, but again, with an aggressive amortization, the best that we can do at this point, it's just, you know, going over that 20% hurts my heart because we work so hard um, to, get, to get below that. Um, but considering the economy and the jobs that are associated with our capital program, um, it's the risk is is very low, but I did want to make you guys aware of that. Okay, the next slide, Ethan. Senator Benini has his hand up, Representative. Senator Benini. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and Jen. Thank you guys for all you do. Just a quick question on the uh, twenty percent number, which is great that you've worked hard to get down that. Is that comparable to surrounding states or national levels? What is sort of the national transportation? It's, and Senator, that's a great question. It, it's all over the map. It's all over the map. We really were trying to mirror the fiduciary responsibilities that the general fund has. I think they're at 15%. 
Um, um, so it, it's, it is all over the place. Some states out in New Jersey, for an example, I mean, they're, they're borrowing, I mean, some, their biggest cost is debt service. So I mean, it really varies across the, across the country. Okay, but we, but we are one of the lower ones, I assume, with those numbers. We absolutely are, which is why we continue to have a very strong bond rating. Gotcha. Thank you. Welcome. So this is the um, our, our operating uses. I just wanted to you know go over that and just show you that again, um, again, just highlighting that that DTC subsidy is normally much higher. Um, much higher than the 26% that you see here, and our storm and emergency fund is, is still solid. So, and the last slide that I have to show you is next slide again. <laughs> so this is this is basically the state capital on the bond bill side. This is what you're um, what you are including in the in the bond bill. Um, and I'm going to kind of go over road systems, as you know, is all of our, our major projects, transit. Um, again, that's the uh, capital dollars for buses and shelters um, and their technology support systems, um, all of our heavy equip our, our uh, equipment and our uh, IT, and then that 9% of grants and allocations, uh, which is the municipal street aid, CTF, um, and one other thing that I can't remember. What is it? Oh, and transportation infrastructure investment fund. Oh, I'm glad to think I have my team socially distanced from me, it's six feet away, but they're hollering. So if you're wondering why I'm doing that, it's because they're answering questions for me. Um, so we also elected to uh, fully fund the transportation infrastructure investment fund um, for next year because, again, we're really focusing on the economy and those dollars are spent on jobs. That's the, the whole point of that fund. Um, I will tell you that the current transportation infrastructure investment fund announcements um, will be happening over the next uh, 30 days with some really good and high paying jobs are coming out of that fund. So we did recommend that as well in the grants and applications. Um, so we also, what you're gonna see as we go through appendix A is that um, we did from the governor's recommended budget reduce the municipal street aid, which was at a one time uh, $10 million amount, which is normally at 6 million. We did reduce that down. Um, and we kept CTF at the 22,680, which is the 275 per person. I know we're going to have some more conversations about that um, as we go through. Um, but with that, I was, Madam Chair, I was thinking we could just jump right into Appendix A, which hopefully you guys have in front of you. It should be right after the slideshow in your binder. Does everybody see that? Appendix A is right after the slideshow. Okay, everybody got it? Just shake your head so I know that you're looking at it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so what you're seeing is, I'm just gonna go over some of the differences between governor's recommended and now. If you would just go to the bottom at the, the grand total, um, you see the reduction uh, on the state side of $4 million. That basically equates to the municipal street aid reduction. Um, and if you look at the federal authorization, that jumped uh, up, up almost to $50 million. Um, and the reason that is, is what I explained in the presentation, is that we were able to um, federalize a lot of our projects, even more so using, using toll credits. Um, and then also the viaduct uh, project, um, some, some early early lettings for lack of a better term on that on that project, and then the 273 and 95. So just to kind of hit some, some highlights for you guys on Appendix A, um, some of the bigger bigger changes that you see. Um, again, uh, the rehab of I-95 is, is a, big, a big chunk of the, the difference. Um, some pre-construction expenses and then uh, early work packages that were required to do before we actually moved into the larger project, that's a big one. Um, another one that uh, we, we discussed was the 273 and I 95 intersection improvements. Um, that also uh, was uh, increased. And then um, some of the things that I was talking about changing the uh, federal funding ratio to be able to optimize more federal dollars. And um, we did that on projects throughout the state. We did it on the Elkton Road project, um, we did it on Lockmeath Way to Punch and Run in King County, and also on Minus Conway, the uh, GSI there. 
that we were able to change the, the regular funding ratio from 80-20 to 100% federal dollars. Um, so again, really creative um, things from our, our, our finance folks and very proud of the work that they've done to keep our capital program moving and keep those jobs here and, uh, and secure. Um, so if there's specific questions that you guys have on projects for um, uh, Appendix A, um, Shante Hastings, who's my chief engineer, I know she's on somewhere, um, but we can answer those questions for you. Um, I would like to just um, ask you two questions, Jen. One is um, the municipal street aid is at this point, though it was reduced from the governor's recommended, it is equal to FY20. Is that, that is, true? That's correct. And the CTF for legislators, which is also generates jobs and road paving is reduced? That is correct. So the strategy there that um, I was gonna share when we got to um, the epilogue, but we, we can surely talk about that now, um, is that we, we're, and you're gonna see a very a reduced paving list as well. Um, again, borrowing to make ends meet, that's what we're. That's basically what we're doing right now, and to keep those construction jobs and those engineering jobs moving. Um, we did. We did recommend that we fund the CTF pilot again, um, but I cannot fund the CTF pilot and additional CTF dollars. It's got. It's got to be one or the other because I, I can't borrow because those are all 100% state funded programs. So that that of course will be up to uh, you guys to decide, but um, can't do both. Not not this year. And I have a couple um, people who have raised their hand to speak. The first one is Senator Walsh, and then it'll be Rep. Williams and Rep. Ramon. So starting with Senator Walsh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for being here with us today. I have a question. I heard you talking about the 273-95 intersection improvement down there. That's a big deal in, in my district. Uh, I'm just wondering what the status of that is right now. Is that uh, is that in the design stage, the construction phase? Is it on schedule? Where where is that right now? I did see. I believe I saw some layout. As far as construction goes down there. Uh, is there any land purchasing involved, or where are we with that? Sure, um, Shantae, I'll go ahead and yield. Sure, happy to answer that. Uh, good morning, everyone. The 27395 project, um, our design is nearly complete. We expect to advertise the project um, in July or August timeframe. Um, no right of way was required. Um, there are some utility uh, relocations that need to be done for that project, but we're basically ready to go um, with construction starting late fall um, or into the winter. Okay, thank you. Representative Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, um, thank you, Secretary, for the presentation. Um, could you just tell what does the, I'm looking at Appendix A, um, collectors, what does that mean? Because I see Old Capitol Trail, Newport Road, and Stanton Road listed. So collectors, that's just the type of roadway that they're designated as based on US DOT guidance. And, and what are the plans for that? For which specific project? Um, it's Old Capitol Trail, Newport Road, and Stanton Road. Uh, yeah, Shante, you're up. <laughs> Thinking that that's it, we haven't done any work on that yet. That's a new project um, in, the, in the CTP that would begin in fiscal year 21. Um, so there will be a lot of public outreach to determine what the um, proposed improvements are and evaluating the impacts. I can send you a brief summary of, um, I, I believe it came from Wilmapco, so I can give you a summary of what they um, provided to us. Yes, I, that's what I thought it was for, and I'm aware we've had meetings with them, just the roundabout and everything. So, okay, thank you so much. And I, I would add also that um, all legislators got their customized quarterly report yesterday. Um, so all the major projects in your districts, um, and it's pretty thick, <laughs> all of them are right now, um, but please take a look at that. So all the information on everything specific to your, uh, your district is in there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next question comes from Representative Ramon, and then we have Senator Townsend afterwards. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Secretary, I was uh, just trying to follow up with, remember there was a uh, sidewalk improvement from 
Price's Corner, I believe that was going all the way to Limestone Road. And there was some discussion of maybe going from Limestone up. I think it was more sidewalk. And I'm not sure what if it was federal, what if it was state. Um, is that, and I, and I did see it come all the way to Limestone and uh, Kirkwood, their crossroads. Is that continuing to go up uh, uh, Kirkwood Highway? And is that Del Dot or federal, or can you give me some guidance on that? And the second question, very quickly, maybe a statement, um, is I just wanted to say the importance of, I'm getting a lot of uh, um, impatience on the paper mill road section that we closed and kind of modified. I think uh, Senator Scola mm -hmm. and I both great in that area. And I think even Representative Baumbach are starting to get just some concerns from businesses that are just, you know, we, you know, I know how it changed. I know why it changed. It all makes sense. But just some of the businesses uh, weren't quite um, uh, prepared. And more importantly, than with the COVID effects on their business, it's even making it a little tougher. I just was trying to verify that that's definitely going to be done by June 22nd, or even if it isn't, can, or maybe before June 22nd, is there a way we would be able to open that road one way with a flagger for an interim period now that, because I've walked down there, they got a lot done. I think maybe we can uh, finagle that to help move traffic. So two questions, one, the Kirkwood Highway sidewalk safety program thing that was going on. And the second would be uh, the paper mill road projects just to get an update because I honestly didn't see my packet. Maybe it was already in it, but I didn't see that yet. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Shantae in a second, but what um, Representative Ramon and Senator Sokola um, and uh, Representative Bumbach had, were dealing with is something that we were doing across the state where we were really taking advantage of the reduced traffic. Um, so we made some decisions to close roads completely to get the projects done faster. Um, and we did that again all over the state. Most most went unnoticed. This one did not go unnoticed. But and you guys were made uh, aware literally the same day we made the decision. Um, and it's been very beneficial. So um, Shante, share the good news about that project. Good news. So I'm actually going out there this afternoon after uh, we're done with uh, Bonville um, to check on the status. So I will ask the team um, right now. We believe it's going to be ahead of the June 22nd date. Um, I can't give you a hard date yet, but I am going out in the field today, and I will see if there's any uh, ability to open up. Um, and use flagger control to do that. Um, in terms of the uh, ADA improvements, I will have to check on the full limits of that, Representative Ramon. Um, I'm not as intimately familiar with that project, um, but I will get back to you on what the full limits are and whether there was an extension or not. Uh, thank you, and Secretary. I think that I think the discussion on the Kirkwood Highway was the the, the deaths going across roads and some sort of a safety program or something. And again, right. I, I I think you did a great job from Price's Corner to limestone but for some reason i had perceived it was going to be a second branch so and thank you very very much about the paper mill thing i i did walk there uh, yesterday or the day before and they're doing a great job i mean it looked that's why i asked the question it looked like they were pretty far along so thank you so much for doing that thank you representative ramon we're now going to move to senator townsend thank you madam chair um madam secretary always a pleasure your team is fantastic um, too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. Quick question for Shante to follow up on the response to that 273 to Senator Walsh's question. I'll look at the website and, and I guess the briefing materials that were sent yesterday, the district by district materials, but just real quick for, for all those tuning in and just for all of us, please remind me the 273 project as it's going out the door here ends up being like, like a, a pared down or phased approach, right? Compared to like what had been talked about before. Can you just give a, a quick summary of, of, of that again? Sure, I'd be happy to. So yes, there are uh, multiple phases to that project. Um, so the, the uh, safety component of it is as you're exiting uh, 95 southbound at 273, you have the Harmony Road signal that's right there. Um, and so during the peak hours, you have, you have delays that back up on the ramp, you have a lot of weaving going on. And so we're addressing that by um, basically pulling that ramp farther east um, to give additional queue length um, and also reducing um, one of basically, right now when you come off of 95, you basically have almost two ramps either to go eastbound on 273 or westbound. Those two ramps will be combined into one and there will be a signalized intersection um, at the off ramp with 273. In addition to that, um, we are also adding some additional lighting. Um, we're doing some paving work along 273. Um, and there is one more thing. Oh, we're doing a bunch of uh, bridge uh, state of good repair work. 
Um, so that's why in Appendix A, there was an increase in the contract cost. We basically took the opportunity to say, hey, we're going to be there. Let's get all of these things that we've, we've been needing to do um, done at the same time. And then the second phase of that would potentially be a diverging diamond interchange um, that's contemplated along 273 to, again, take care of all those movements that are having in, happening in such a short uh, span of time. But right now, we don't have a schedule for that second phase of the project. So it'll be two phases, not like four, four or five phases, just two phases. Everything you say, yes. except, for, everything you said, except for the diverging diamond is all in phase one and is going out the door. Correct. The and only other phase that was contemplated is a widening of 273, and that's more of a long-term project. As you know, it will have significant impacts to residents along 273. So we're hoping to do this first project, check what the benefits are, see if we need to do the diverging diamond, and then the third approach would be to widen 273. And that's just a huge, uh, from a cost standpoint, as well as impact standpoint, that's a longer term solution. Two quick questions, uh, sort of not, not, not necessarily best case scenario, but just reasonable case scenario. When does construction start in phase one and when would it end? Sure, I'm just looking it up in our system. Um, best case is it will start over the winter um, and it would be done by the end of next calendar year. So about a year of construction. That's best case or that's like, that's sort of reasonable case? That's, that's reasonable, that's what we think is going to happen. And then um, what's the timetable for the diverging diamond consideration? Uh, I don't have that schedule in front of me. I will get back to you. Um, I, I can't recall whether or not it's programmed in the CTP in a few years out or not. I will get back to you on that. But somewhere between like three to seven years. You referenced 273 expansion as like long term and quite obviously very uncertain. And, you know, but I assume that by that you mean that the divergent diamond is more like medium term. <laughs> and, and, and so. <laughs> no, I mean, well, no, I mean, people, I mean, obviously people in this area, which spans my district, Center Walsh's district even a few other districts. This, as you guys know, this has been a long time coming and people are like, wait a minute, we're doing it what way now? And so I think the main thing is just like, there's this phase one you know, portfolio we're talking about and then the divergent diamond would be like three or seven years maybe, but you're not, even, you're not even sure if that's going to be necessary, right? You just said that you're gonna do an analysis after this, this phase one to see if a divergent diamond would be necessary or, or beneficial. That is correct. Okay. Secretary, I certainly invite you to, for my, for my, but not, not for everyone else, literally for my own benefit, to help me understand what it is I said uh, to generate that that response. You're, you're just a lawyer; you can't help it. <laughs> the next um, question I have from Senator Sokola, and then after him, it'll be Representative Brady. Thank you. Uh, uh, Madam Secretary, for the, the work you're doing, um, and I'm really pleased that the, the Newark Main Street project uh, is getting done uh, ahead of time. Um, I, I frankly was not all that satisfied with the communication around Paper Mill Road. I recognize there were some challenges around that, but I, I would have liked to have known. It may have been the same day, but others learned about it before I did, and that uh, was a little embarrassing. Um, the um, the communication also extends, though, to things like sidewalk projects in neighborhoods. And, and I recognize that things need to be done in ADA compliance, but we clearly need to do a much better job of communicating with the residents exactly what that means. And when we just lean on this ADA compliance and then forget about it, and we find uh, a sidewalk being done in a manner that's different in the same neighborhood at the same time, um, we lose credibility, and 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 you know that that's not necessary. That's, you know, our contractors and your staff need to do a better job in making sure that it's clear what's going to be done, and and if there are options around it, we need to make it clear what those options are. Um, I've been out to see multiple times things that uh, after the fact we find out things could have been done differently and um, and after the fact nobody wants to change how things are done and and I just think that um, especially at this time people are under stress and and you know we, we need to make a good faith effort to communicate clearly and completely and consistently with uh, with the people that we're trying to serve Thank you. Yeah, well, well, well taken, Senator. I, I, you know, in, in this state, we're 
very far behind with ADA compliance sidewalks. So we're really making a good faith effort to you know, do the best we can. Um, we really try to put you know, a multimodal system out there uh, that's accessible for everyone. Um, but especially in some of these older neighborhoods that have had sidewalks, you know, sometimes it's a larger sidewalk. We do our best to taper, um, but you know, I, I think that uh, point, point taken on the communication. Thank you, um, Senator Sokola. Thank you, Senator Sokola. I'd like to, um, I have a question from Representative Brady. Thank you, Madam Chair and Madam Secretary. Thank you as well. Um, while we're on the subjects of sidewalks, I'd like to ask special consideration in only in that I, I would like to have an answer on the following. Uh, there's a section of roadway at Route 48, which is um, Lancaster Pike. And, and it, it's from it's roughly, as I said, the 5100 block or 5200 block, but it's between Herlick Drive and um, Little Falls um, drives. Um, and <clears throat> it's been at least four years that I've been telling the residents there um, that walk, use that to get to the bus and also use that to get to some of the new shoppings that's uh, just up above there by Capers and Lemons. And um, I not only have not seen any results, but the communication breakdown has been rather noticeable and I um, am kind of left on the short end. So I'd like to know if that is indeed on the PAR program, which I had told it would be. Interestingly enough, that many years ago, I went out there with some officials and I was actually looking for an estimate from CTF when I was told not to worry about it, it it would it was on the PAR program, uh, and uh, to date I've seen no progress or haven't heard any responses. So I'd appreciate just I'd rather tell the folks no after all these years than it'll be next spring. I've, they ran out of springs. Right, I t totally understand. Um, pedestrian access um, that the whole PAR program. Um, I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat that it, it did stall for a couple of years, um, but it, we are back and we are we're moving uh, forward with with a lot of those. Um, it's my understanding that that is, but uh, Shantae, I'm not sure about the timing. Are you familiar with the timing? I don't have that here, um, but we will get back to you, Representative Brady. Today, it's uh, out of the Division of Planning as it, it's being run. So let me find out, and I'll get back to you shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I don't have any more people in line for questions. I'm <laughs> questioning, do, is there anybody else that has questions? And if not, I do have a few questions. Um, no other hands. Um, my question, um, Secretary Cohn, is I do um, very much appreciate that you guys have, have um, at Del Dot have been doing everything there was a project in um, my district where there had not been ADA accessible sidewalks for pretty much at least decade or two. And there was expansion of the sidewalk like a bump out so that the utility poles were no longer um, keeping that sidewalk from being accessible. And I do, I do thank you for that on Silverside Road. Um, I also want to ask about um, first and the pilot. I I know that we appreciate the pilot because it's getting a lot more roads done than we could do individually as legislators. And although they are, you know, not in my representative district or others, I mean, they're definitely you're going after the worst roads first, and I appreciate that. Um, my question is, is there a way to raise CTF, which also can create jobs and it helps our community members with, without cutting the pilot? Can you think of a way to do that, even to get it up a little bit closer to, um, you know, three or a little over 300,000 a person? So that's, you know, I can't, I can't afford to do both. I, not, not this year. Um, you, what you're going to see, once we, once we get to it, is an already reduced paving list, which is normally where we pull from. 
um, but it's already reduced 20% from prior year. And, and you know, that's, you know, that paving rehab list is paving the roads that are most traveled. So, um, you know, and there, and we trust me, you guys, we're borrowing to make ends meet here. So, you know, I, this year we're just going to have to choose which one, which one is more important. Um, we can always, you know, we can not do the pilot this year and pick it up next year um, and then put that amount into the additional for CTF. But I just, I, there's, there's just nowhere to take it from anymore. Not, not this year. And, and I, I just want to say, say um, Secretary Cohen, Cohen, that I appreciate that you have already made some adjustments to bring CTF up and changed, um, you know, brought the enhancement to municipal street aid down. And so I appreciate that, that you've been doing that. Are there any other questions? Senator Sokola. Madam Secretary, um, what about um, cutting a little bit off of the Transportation Infrastructure Investment Fund? So, I... And I'm on that committee, so... I know, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm speechless right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So the, the only reason why I would recommend uh, against that, you guys, is, you know, that's tied directly to jobs. You know, so, you know, even if it's just, you know, $100,000 for a small business to you know, do their entrance, that's still, that's up to, you know, 10, 20, you know, really good paying jobs. So that would honestly be the, the last place I would, I would take it from. Um, the only other option, and I'm, and I'm, guys, I'm just thinking out loud with you right now, is that um, things in Wilmington aren't going as fast as I think they had anticipated. Um, so we could potentially take a little bit out of the South Wilmington infrastructure improvements. And I haven't run this by my finance people, um, but I'm, I'm looking, she's 10 feet away from me and she's making a face. I can't tell what kind of face that is. That's a, that's a, we can make that happen face. So that, that is literally the only, the only place that, you know, we can think of that isn't farther along. And as you guys know, well, just by driving around, you know, a lot of our dollars are tied up in real construction. So, you know, we don't have that spending versus infrastructure uh, authorization issue We're we're, we're spending all of our dollars. I mean, every, every, every cent. So um, that's the only one that's moving a little slower. So that is that is a potential, but I would firmly recommend not touching the TIF, you guys. That's too focused on jobs. Okay, and um, I have, have another question from Senator Benini. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And and it's, it's not a question about raising the number, which I'm sure the Secretary would be pleased to hear me this year, not bringing it up. Um, but the the, 22680, what does that work out to, including what chairs get and individuals get? And I apologize if I didn't do it. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's the two, 275 per um, legislator and 630, I think, to the, yeah, 630 to the, to the chairs. Thank you very much. Do you um wait? Oh, do you think that um in reducing that project for Wilmington would that delay it? And is there a way that they will then be able to make that money up and that time up? I mean, I hate to cut something that yeah, no, I so many I, people depend on. I I, I totally understand. Um, they you know, again, they're just, they're not moving as quickly. So I, I think that th if this ended up being anything, it would be a push maybe into next fiscal year. Um, but, you know, again, I, I just had the thought out loud with you guys right this second. So I haven't done any any analysis on it. It's just, they're, they're not, they haven't even spent the 10 million that we gave them for this current fiscal year. So if anything could um, potentially, you know, slide with a little less next year, it would, it would be this one. What um, is, um, Senator want, Scola, any comments? I think um, this is a time where we do want to make as much of an impact as possible at the local level and people see when road work gets done in their neighborhood. Um, I think they, um, they recognize that, you know, there's a lot of tough choices. Um, 
but uh, but I I think that if we could uh, supplement um, the transportation um, the CTF fund uh, that would be a potential good step in the right direction. Uh, we also have an awful lot of legislators who are putting some CTF money into drainage projects as they they need to do. You know we need to have matches for those and um, and in some of those districts where they have some of the most pressing uh, transportation needs in neighborhoods, they also have drainage issues. And uh, Representative Hepburn and I are continually putting uh, large amounts of money into to some of those projects for drainage uh, in order to get those things done. So um, we, we would like you to, to sharpen your pencil a little bit if you can and <laughs> take a haircut one place and, and, uh, and give us a, an opportunity to, to make it happen. Um, and I, I do definitely, I, um, I concur with Senator Scola. I think that especially with people being home more, they are noticing all the problems with their neighborhood streets and especially with the drainage issues. So I definitely see that. I think that just a small reduction in that city of, um, Wilmington project, which you're saying, you know, that might be the way to do it. Maybe um, I just saw from CG Morton that it would be like 1.55 could take everybody to 300, which is still less than what we got in CTF for 19 and 20, but it would definitely um, be a lot more projects in people's neighborhoods, which is what our constituents really want to see. Um, so that's just my opinion. We can, we can, we can make the 1.55 happen and reduce the South Wilmington infrastructure improvement by 1.5. And I, I totally understand um, what everyone is saying and I you know, and I totally respect that um, all of you do the right thing with your CGF, um, but I can't say that across the board. So with that being said, um, Madam Chair, we would um, make, make that adjustment to Appendix A um, to reduce the South Wilmington infrastructure improvement um, minus 1.55 million and add that to um, the CTF program under grants and allocations. And I have um, Representative Grady with a question and then I have the new numbers here. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, Secretary, this is not directed at you. As a matter of fact, it's probably an expression more for my colleagues as we go future with developing policy, but the Senator, identified as well as uh, Representative Heffernan, that conflict and, and that exists between uh, subdivisions um, and stormwater management or resurfacing roadways and stormwater management. For some reason in particular, that area around the Hercules golf course, uh, former Hercules golf course, and, um, that entire area is being developed. And um, I, I have to uh, pinpoint this, but um, what appears to be happening is I'll have the the county will approve these subdivision plans and the course of contract will come in and complete the job. And then in a matter of no time, we are, when I say we, the state are back in there with uh, Conservation District and, and Del Dot. Your folks have been very good about it. Uh, it's just something that I'd like to share with my colleagues and also acknowledge what the senator had said and Representative Heffernan had said that um, I spend more time with Kevin Donnelly sometimes than I do my family looking at these, these projects, um, but it's something we all have to address at some point. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from um, any bond members? Madam Chair, would you like a motion to um, adopt the list as uh, amended? Well, I would like to um, make a change in, this is the change that um, Jen and Secretary Cohn, and you can tell me if this is correct. 
Um, the South Wilmington will go to 8.45 million and the CTF will be 24.23 million. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, I'll make that motion as amended. Senator Townsend seconded. Second. Thank you. Um, and Lonnie, please call the roll. Senator Bernini. No. Senator Bernini, no. Representative Brady. Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray. Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski. Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pennyjohn. Yes. Senator Pennyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon. Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Representative Walsh. Yes. Representative Walsh, yes. Representative Williams. Uh, I had my hand up for a question. Representative, Representative, can we hold the roll call on Representative Williams question? I just wanna know what does that give us for our CTF uh, funds for each legislator. Is that 300,000 each? That's a yes? Yes. 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 Okay. That's a yes. Uh, then my uh, vote is yes. Thank you. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. 11 yes, one no. Motion passes. Secretary Cohen, do you want to go over Appendix B, the paving list? Yes, there we go. Appendix B, the paving list. <laughs> so um, again, what you're seeing in front of you guys is um, a reduced paving uh, program. It's at uh, 92 million for fiscal year 2021, but um, these are the locations that um, we have selected um, <clears throat> as in our annual program based by road rating. Nothing complicated with this one. It's just. Are there any questions from bond members? Seeing no question, Madam Chair, I would make a motion that we uh, adopt the paving list as presented. Hey, John, seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lonnie, could you? Oh, you know what? Did we ever finish calling the roll on the, um, we never did, on the first motion for Appendix A? Did we finish or we did? Okay, then Appendix B, we have a motion and we have a second. And Lonnie, please call the roll. Senator Bernini? Yes. Senator Bernini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. 
Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. 12 yes. Um, we're now going to, um, what we're going to do, and Secretary Cohn, is we are going to break and return after lunch. We are breaking a little early for lunch that many committee members, including me, want to attend a press conference from the Black Caucus is holding at noon. And so we will break. I'm going to say the committee will stand adjourned and then we will come back at one o'clock. Committee will stand adjourned.
going to call the bond bill committee back to order. Representative Heffernan, I think, was on mute. Secretary Cohen, if you want to go back to oh, your sorry. epilogue um, suggested changes. And I sure. was so throwing you, it over to Secretary Cohen. So thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, how do you want me to do this? You want to just go through every section or? If you would like to just go through the new sections that you submitted, which are um, documents also posted online. So section 81, section 83. 84 and then updates to 108, 112, and your two new sections. And then we will get to the rest of the boilerplate sections when we do um, the rest of the bill after this one. Okay, sure, no problem. Um, so section 81 basically is just the general provisions that give us the um, additional ability to do the borrowing that we discussed earlier today on both the uh, regular borrowing side and the Garvey bonds associated with I-95. Again, that's just this is just the updated numbers to allow for the additional um, borrowing. Um, section 83, that's the grants and allocations. So what you see in front of you will need to be changed based on the votes that you guys took prior to recess. So section A, that sum should read 24,230,000. Everything else remains the same. And again, that's just to reflect the, the vote that you guys took before, um, before the recess. Um, section 84, the 5310 program, again, those are just that boilerplate language and it's just updates uh, of the numbers for that program. Section 108 is the CTF stuff that was put in last year and all of those uh, sections have been um, done, so those can all come out. Um, the section 112 is the Weldon House uh, transfer and that has been completed. The new section XXS um, South Market Street redevelopment that was actually in the mini bomb bill in January um, and needs to be continued to keep that, um, that working with uh, between the department and RDC as those um, agreements need to be entered into. And then the only other new section that we have is um, the section XXS on BB Health. Um, this language allows us to enter in, into an agreement with BB Healthcare. Um, to allow them to do some uh, road work while they're doing their major $40 million project down in Sussex County. Um, we've been trying really hard down there to uh, be able to do some uh, relief roads. Um, and, and so that, uh, that'll that impact SR24 and SR1. Um, and BB has agreed to allow a public road through their property um, and then turn it over to, to us. So um, they're just going to incorporate that into their larger project. I and mean, we will reimburse them for the amount that they spent for the public roadway. Um, and this is the uh, language that allows us to do that. So that, that's it, nothing else new, um, but happy to answer any questions on any of those, those sections. Senator Sokol. Senator Benini. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and, and Madam Secretary. Thank you. And this is just, I just can't remember. So I apologize. But the language regarding South Market Street redevelopment and the city of Wilmington and the RDC, was there a number associated with that? Or are these all projects that, that we were planning on paying through DelDOT regardless? And I apologize, you may have told us in, in back in March or, or January, and I simply can't remember. Sure. So um, that is actually, we were talking about this earlier. We um, invested 10 million last year and the 10 million this year, which we reduced by 1.5, um, moving, moving that to CTF. Um, but the language allows us to work with the RDC and the city of Wilmington, um, focusing on uh, as many public private partnerships as we can to start developing um, that side of the river. So there isn't really a specific number in, in mind for, um, for the long haul. It's just an investment that we're making every year to assist uh, the, the city and RDC. And the language allows us to enter into those agreements with the RDC. Okay. So, so it's basically gives you the flexibility as opportunities come up. Correct. Okay. And they have a master plan. And I'm sure Senator Sokola or uh, Representative Heffernan can, can talk to this as well since they sit on the RDC board. And they have a master plan for that development, um, which is uh, you know still, still moving forward. It's just uh, going just a little bit slower than, than we had originally anticipated. Thank you. Okay. 
Senator Pettyjohn has his hand up next. Senator Pettyjohn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, the BB Health section, which BB project is this? The, I'm reading my notes. It's the new connector roads on their property located off Warrington Road. Warrington. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Are there any other um, questions from committee members? Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion that we adopt uh, as written section 81, section 83, section 84, new section XXX South Market Street Redevelopment and new section XXX BB Health. And do I have to say about the deleting so, sections? Um, I believe you can just place them on hold. And then if we do not vote them in, they will be dropped out of the bill. Okay, and we will place on hold section 108 and 112. Second. Second. Who was that? It was Ramon and Teddy John. Ramon, okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Lonnie, would you please call the roll? Senator Benini. Yes. Senator Benini, yes. Representative yes. Brady. Representative yes. Brady, yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray. Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski. Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pennyjohn. Yes. Senator Pennyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon. Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative yes. Heffernan, Representative Heffernan, yes. 12, yes. Motion passes. All right, Secretary Cohen, do you want to go over the date changes in Rule 12? Sure. Um, hopefully you guys have that in front of you. Um, there is absolutely nothing new here, just our annual um, update of the uh, of the date. So um, that's it. That's the only change. Too easy. Are there any questions from committee members or comments? Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion that we adopt uh, Rule 12 with the new dates. Thank Senator Pettyjohn seconding. Lonnie, will you please call the roll? Senator Benini. Yes. Senator Benini, yes. Representative Brady. Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. 12, yes. Motion passes. I believe that's all for us. Thank you so much to Del Dodd. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Thank you. All right, Madam Chair, if we want to move to boilerplate epilogue. Right now we're saving so much time, everybody's shuffling in and out of here, right? Yeah. All right, so we will begin with House Bill 300, which is the governor's proposed capital budget for fiscal year 2021. We will start with section eight, which is on page 10. 
sections one through seven are the actual appropriation amounts and we cannot vote on those sections until after the June 17th DFAC meeting. So beginning with section eight, section eight says that comparisons to the previous year's budget are shown by underline and deletions by strike through. Section nine says conservation districts are not required to follow the provisions of the federal acquisition regulations unless the contract requires it. Section 10 allows the first state preservation revolving fund to expend interest generated by the community redevelopment fund. Section 11 requires any proceeds from the sale of property funded by community redevelopment fund grants to the Laurel Redevelopment Corporation to be reinvested into the town of Laurel. Section 12 requires all state agencies and school districts to submit quarterly capital expenditure reports to the director of OMB and the controller general. Section 13 requires the director of OMB and the controller general to notify affected state agencies of the provisions of this act. Section 14 requires any additional general fund deposits to be placed in a sheet special fund account. Section 15 authorizes DENREC and DELDOT to enter into direct agreements with U of D, Dell State, and Dell Tech for conducting research. And then section 16 creates a court facilities improvement working group to develop a plan for implementing flexible, cost-effective, and potentially innovative solutions for unmet court space needs for statewide. Section 17 is regarding Kent and Sussex County judicial court facilities, and we'd like to place that section on hold until next week. If you would like to stop there and take make a motion on those. Um, are, are we, I, I have a question. Are we putting section 17 on hold right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from any committee members? Senator Pettyjohn. Uh, oh, thank you, Madam Bonini. Chair. And then uh, I have Senator Bonini. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on section 16, the Court Facilities Improvement Working Group. Um, I, I believe that's been finished. It stays there, right? Stays there? Uh, I see Mike nodding his head. Senator, it has typically stayed there from one year to the next, um, given how it's written and the types of projects that that come up. It's just simply there for collaboration. Okay, very good. Senator Benini, Senator Benini. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a, a quick question. I apologize, probably should have asked this before. For specific epilogue requests from colleagues and, and constituents and, and things of that nature, when, when will we be doing that and what's sort of the time schedule for that? We will um, be doing that on June 18th. We are only doing boilerplate epilogue today. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? If there are no comments? other questions, if there are no other questions, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion we adopt as written section eight, section nine, Section 10, Section 11, Section 12, Section 13, Section 14, Section 15, Section 16, and keep Section 17 on hold. Second. We have, a, we have a motion and a second. Lonnie, will you please call the roll? Senator Bonini? Yes. Senator Bonini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yeah. Yep, Senator, yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? 
Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. 12 yes. Motion carries. Motion carries. All right, picking back up with section 18 under the Office of Management and Budget. This section says OMB is responsible for the design and construction of all products listed under OMB and funds for equipment only will be transferred to the agency. Section 19 authorizes OMB to engage in one public works procurement utilizing a craft training program. Section 20 requires all public works projects, including school projects that use a construction manager to secure a performance and payment bond. Section 21 creates a nine member executive committee to oversee construction of new or major renovation of judicial facilities. Section 22 says no more than 5% of OMB's minor capital improvements budget may be expended on construction management. Section 23 authorizes the director of OMB to designate names of state owned or state operated courthouse or judicial buildings in Newcastle County. Section 24 says OMB Safety and Homeland Security and DTI shall develop and maintain standards for card access security systems. Section 25 authorizes OMB to use or approve the design build contract mechanism for up to 12 construction projects. Section 26 says the director of OMB must consider legislative space needs as office space becomes available on the 11th floor of the Carville building. Section 27 specifies that the use of 312 Cherry Lane in Newcastle is not subject to the jurisdiction of Newcastle County or any other municipality. Section 28 is regarding the Higher Ed Economic Development Investment Fund, and we'd like to place that section on hold until later as well. And then the next three pieces under the Delaware State Housing Authority, section 29, 30, and 31 regarding the Affordable Rental Housing Program, the Downtown Development District, and the Strong Neighborhoods Housing Fund, we'd like to place all three of those sections on hold until next week. Yes. 28 through 31 should be placed on hold. If there are no questions, Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion that we adopt as written section 18, section 19, section 20, section 21, section 22, section 23, section 24, section 25, section 26 and section 27 and place on hold sections 28 through 31. Second. Thank you. Are there, thank you, Senator Scola. Is there a second? Second. That was Gerald Brady. Second. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the committee on the motion? Madam Chair. Ramon. Representative Ramon. I, the only question I have is that I don't quite understand why 29, 30, and 31 are on hold. Is there a quick reason why those last three are on hold? They don't have uh, something. Representative, those three sections of epilogue reference amounts that have to be voted into section one. So until we vote in those section ones, we won't be updating the epilogue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and there being no other questions, um, I will ask Lonnie to please call the roll. Senator Benini? Yes. Senator Benini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. 
Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Representative Williams is having IT issues. I vote via my... Well... Yeah, have her pop know. on your screen, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, show... Yeah, there she is. <laughs> yes. Thank Representative you. Williams, yes. Senator Sicola? And, and neither one of them had uh, a Facebook. <laughs> yes, Senator Sicola, yes. Yeah, that was a six feet, just saying. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. 12, yes. Thank you. Um, motion passes. Let's keep going. All right, section 32 under Department of Technology and Information, starting on page 20. Section 32 says it prohibits state agencies from initiating an information technology data center project until a formalized plan has been approved by the agency head, the director of OMB, and the chief information officer. Section 33 is regarding IT project funding, and we'd like to place this section on hold for updates. Section 34, under Department of State, makes an appropriation within the Division of Historic and Cultural Affairs for operations and maintenance of museums. Section 35 requires library construction proposals to include a statement on whether the libraries have the required 50% non-state required match. Section 36 allows up to $50,000 of any library construction project to be used for reviewing technology, workflow, and space planning. Section 37 says funds previously appropriated from the Department of State to the Stabilization Endowment for the Arts may be used for operating expenses pursuant to procedures adopted by the Board of the Arts. Section 38 allocates a maximum amount of historic preservation tax credits awarded shall not exceed $8 million for fiscal years 2021 through 2026. Section 39 authorizes the Division of Small Business to provide a match of up to $100,000 to the University of Delaware for federal research grants supporting the development of composite manufacturing technology. Section 40 requires all non-state entities to get the approval of the Riverfront Development Corporation before scheduling the Calmar Nickel. Section 41 says any sale of Del Dot land on Beach Street in Wilmington and Delmarva properties in the Riverfront area are to be deposited into the Transportation Trust Fund. Section 42 says if the Division of Small Business makes an award that is not approved by the Council on Development Finance, the director must notify the Bonville co-chairs within 10 days. Section 43 says if the Director of Small Business and Secretary of Finance determine it advisable to participate in the New Market Tax Credit Program, the director is authorized to form a business entity to apply for and manage the program. Section 44 appropriates funding for the RDC into the Riverfront Development Corporation Fund, and funds may only be expended on activities related to redevelopment of the Brandywine and Christina Riverfront areas. Section 45 authorizes the Division of Small Business to pay administrative fees associated with lift and drip from the Strategic Fund. Section 46 instructs the Division of Small Business to utilize the Strategic Fund to support the establishment or expansion of one or more innovation centers. Section 47 is regarding the Fraunhofer vaccine development. I'd like to place this section on hold for updates. Section 48, regarding the Cultural Access Fund, it authorizes the use of the fund for infrastructure projects. Section 49 allows the Robert H. Parker Library to be eligible for the state portion of library funding. Section 50 authorizes the a portion of the strategic fund to be used for up to 3% of capital expenditures on construction projects of 75 million or more. Section 51 authorizes funding from the strategic fund to support programs that provide financial assistance to further small business development. And section 52 amends Delaware code to include furniture and, and equipment not attached to library buildings as part of construction. Stop there. Yeah, there was uh, some CARES Act money uh, for broadband. I was under the impression Delaware was going to get some. Does that affect anything being done in section um, 33? There, there's no dollar figures in there, but um, I, I know that there was 14 billion for the US in that, I think, and Delaware was supposed to get a share. It, it does not affect um, 
anything related to Section 33, given the fact that they are federal funds um, and we don't appropriate federal funds through our, our operating our, our capital budget, but would be more than happy to follow up with the committee in terms of the usage of the resources and we can put something together for all of you. I think I think you know where I was going. Um, if if mm -hmm. we were eligible to use federal funds for something that we had already kind of targeted, because that wasn't going to be done till the next fiscal year, that could free up a little bit of money to to, to maybe go somewhere else. Okay. I have a question from Senator Bonini. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just is two quick questions on Section 50, the business development allocation. Has that been used yet? Is I guess, is the, I guess the first question that has how much should we do and, and what for? And then on 51, which I guess is all new language, um, I'm surprised that we, we, we the strategic fund already wasn't allowed to do that. And I didn't, I didn't know if there was a specific project we were trying to fund. Thank you. Sure, I, I can answer it. So, Senator, on Section uh, 51, which is, it, it is new, but the intent of it was to memorialize uh, federal money that was uh, used for small business help. It was a recommendation to increase the, uh, the strategic fund in the proposed budget accompanied with this epilogue just to uh, memorialize that a piece of it uh, could be used directly just for small businesses as federal resources went away. Um, and then on section 50, I believe your question was whether it was uh, fully utilized at least in year one. Uh, my understanding is that at least uh, a piece of it has for a project that was in uh, Southern Newcastle County. And I'd be happy to follow up with you on, on the details. That, that'd be great. Thanks, Mike. Sure. I have a um, question from Representative Kim Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Section 39, the Historic Preservation Tax Credit, is that still first come, first serve? And how much does the state lose in revenue with the $8 million tax credit? So I, in terms of the usage of it, it is a first come, first serve. Uh, I'd have to follow up with you on the actual uh, revenue um, that is lost because it's not necessarily a, you know, if there's a million dollar tax credit that you pay a million dollars less in taxes. Right. Um, uh, I can follow up at least on that piece. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, if we could put that on hold. So I get until we get that information. Thank you. Are there any other um, questions? I can't see everybody on our list at the same time. So are there any other? Nope. Pe no. Okay. And yeah. there is there any other Senator Skull? If if somebody raises their hand, they should come to the top of the participant oh, list, so you don't have to scroll oh, the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, Madam uh, Chair, I would like to make a motion that we um, adopt as written Section 32, hold Section 33, uh, adopt Section 34, 35, 36, 37, hold Section 38, adopt Section 39. Section 40, Section 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, hold Section 47, and adopt Sections 48, 49, 50, 51, and 52. Second, so move. Second. Senator Townsend seconded. Um, and I would like to ask Lonnie to please call the roll. 
Senator Bonini? Yes. Senator Bonini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettijohn? Yes. Senator Pettijohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Socolo? Yes. Senator Socolo, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Yes. Representative, Representative Heffernan, yes. 12 yes. Thank you. Um, motion passes. All right, picking up with section 53 under Department of Finance on page 26. Section 53 says, unless prevented by the Internal Revenue Code, interest on bonds issued shall not be included in gross income for federal income tax purposes. Section 54 says issuance of bonds may be subject to amortization requirements. Section 55 under Department of Health and Social Services authorizes the department to lease the property at 305 West 8th Street in Wilmington to the Wilmington Renaissance Corporation. Under Department of Correction, Section 56 requires the Director of OMB to consult with the Commissioner of Correction on Prison Construction and any federal grant funds approved by Clearinghouse for construction of correctional facilities. Section 57 allows the Department of Correction to direct offenders to assist with community restoration projects. Section 58 requires the Department to submit a biannual report to the Director of OMB and the Controller General on the expenditures of maintenance and restoration project funds. Section 59 prohibits the prison industry program from selling precast concrete products on the open market. Section 60 is regarding the James T. Vaughn C building contingency, and I would like to place this section on hold for updates. Section 61 can also be placed on hold for updates. And that one is regarding the conservation cost sharing program within the Department of Natural Resources. Section 62 says DENREC may not purchase land outside of the Open Space Council or bond bill approvals without prior approval from the bond bill committee. Section 63 authorizes DENREC to sign the project cooperation agreements with the US Army Corps of Engineers. Section 64 authorizes DENREC to use park endowment funds to revitalize the Indian River Marina complex. Section 65 sets aside funds for the Newark Reservoir Project and stipulates that if the city of Newark annexes the property, the city must repay the state those funds. Section 66 classifies the 7th Street Marina as an existing marina. Section 67 says DENREC must provide waterway management of state waters, including design depths, channel marking, removal of macroalgae, abandoned vessels, derelict structures, and debris. Section 68 encourages DENREC, along with the Water Infrastructure Advisory Council, to evaluate leveraging the Water Pollution Control Revolving Fund and or 21st Century Fund money. Section 69 exempts the Auburn Valley redevelopment from Newcastle County zoning, land use, and building code regulations. Section 70 allows DENREC to enlist the conservation districts through contracting. Section 71 directs the Newcastle County Conservation District to work with the Bayview community and utilize 21st century funds. Section 72 authorizes funding for NBF and Fort DuPont. This section also allows OMB to transfer property from the Fort DuPont Governor Bacon Complex to the Fort DuPont Redevelopment Corporation. Section 73 regarding resource conservation and development projects authorizes DENREC and the conservation districts to use 21st century and bond funds for planning, surveying, engineering, and construction of approved projects. Section 74 allows DENREC to establish fees for activities and services. Section 75 regarding the Clean Water Initiative, I'd like to place that section on hold for future updates. Section 76 authorizes funding from the Waterway Management Fund to match federal funds for a study. Section 77 provides funds for remediation and encourages Newcastle County to provide matching funds. Section 78 allocates funding for creation and maintenance of the Ogletown Trail. And Section 79 allocates a portion of park facility rehab appropriation funding for projects at historic sites, state parks, including Fort Miles.
take a break there and Thank you. Are there any um, questions from committee members? Questions or comments? I see Senator Dave Sacola has a question. Yeah, when we were on the, um, uh, the hearing process about Fort DuPont, Representative Williams had what I thought was a really terrific question about affordable housing at that part. And I think that we might wanna keep section 72 on hold. I'd like to talk further with Representative Williams and the secretary and uh, a couple others about further exploring uh, the idea Representative Williams had uh, around, that, around that site. And maybe we can put additional language in section 72. I also have a um, question. Uh, thank you, we're gonna put that section on hold. I also have a question from Senator Jack Wall. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I'm assuming I have the right section, but I don't see in the epilogue language, the Poly Drum and Yardway site. I'm assuming that this would be the section it would be in. We had epilogue language that we added last year. Um, I'm assuming we have to do it again this year. Is it? Am I not right in saying that it should have been in this section or it is, is that epilogue language in a, uh, another section? Of the um, I, I'm gonna answer that. Um, that section with the Poly Drummond Yardway site is not considered boilerplate epilogue and we will address talking about that on um, the 18th after the June defect. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Just wanted to make sure, make certain. Thank you. I have um, Representative Mike Ramone. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was uh, referring to section 22 first on the, the actual titling and, and what it has. The NBF, wasn't A already struck from that, um, Senator, you were talking about uh, the, the former NBF uh, facility in New York Lynn, that struck. So the only, I believe, uh, effort of, of Section 72 is the Fort DuPont complex now, correct? Or does somebody know that? Dave, you're, Dave, you're on mute. So, Senator Scola, you're on mute. There we go. Yes, uh, it's, it's strictly about Fort DuPont. Right. Okay, thank you, Senator. And the second is, uh, I understand, uh, I, I would like to put um, section 74 on hold, please. I see that. How much we lose, it's millions. Okay. Um, replacing section 74 on hold. Um, I also have a question from Representative Gray, or were you done, Representative Ramon? Yes, yes, Madam Chair, thank okay. you. Thank you, I have a question next from Representative Ronnie Gray. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, section 67, waterway management, something I brought up earlier, I wanted to, to uh, bring Secretary um, uh, Denrec. Uh, it says in here on the second, DENREC will maintain design depths, mark navigational channels of the state that are not maintained and marked by any entity of the federal government. We, uh, I've sent uh, pictures the last two years and to DENREC and then I got an email a few days ago and I put my boat in the water Saturday and the navigational aids in uh, Roy's Creek, Little Aswan Bay, uh, the email was about White's Creek, um, and this this uh, goes through to says we need to dredge. We're just not doing this. Um, the legislative body was, uh, both houses were very supportive, and we passed, uh, Senator Hawker and I put together a bill that raises $1.1 million for dredge and navigation aids, but it's just not getting done. So I'm asking the committee, how can I... Do we put this, I mean, I, I want this language here, but how do we get them to do this? Senator 
Senator I, I suggest putting that on hold. And um, what section is it again? It's section Gray? 67. 67. Put it on hold and we'll figure it out. And, and I don't want to pick on Denrick, but it's, it's a safety issue. We, we've got, uh, you know, like there's um, had a nice system where they had a four inch PVC pipe and on the top was a red or, or, uh, or green placard that was reflective. It's uh, even or odd. Uh, I lost my lights one night on the way home. I had a, had a uh, spotlight. It was so nice. I picked up the, that uh, placard. What, what has been replaced out in Roy Creek was the, the, um, the PVC pipe broke off and we lost the placard. There's a, a floating uh, marker, but uh, you know, it's, it's just, we, we need some more attention to this. And so if we put it on hold, maybe I can address it with uh, Secretary uh, Garvin and, uh, or someone on, on the bond committee, see what we can do to, to you know, we, we need to do this for safety reasons. Thank you. Thank you, um, Representative Gray. Section 67 is now on hold. Our next um, question comes from Representative Kim Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to thank Senator Sokola for remembering my comments about the affordable housing in that section. So I appreciate you bringing that up and putting that section on hold. And I just I have a question for Section 79 since we're talking about um, revenue stream, and I'm not sure if we, you know, if we have enough money moving forward for everything. Should we put Section 79 on hold because it it's underlined in its new funds? That's just a question. So, Representative, maybe I can help clarify that section a little bit. So that says every year there is an appropriation made to Denrec for park facility rehab um, so that they can do work throughout state parks. And so what this would require is that whatever appropriation they get, they have to spend $500,000 of that appropriation on um, historic sites, including Fort Miles. Okay. All right. Thank you. And um, if I could also ask, um, is Section 74 on hold as well? I believe Representative Ramon asked for that. I, I, okay, thank you. Yes, section 74 is on hold. Section 75 is on hold. Section 72 is on hold. Would you like to put section, would you like to put section 79 on hold or no? No, I think we're there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Our next question comes from Senator Bonini. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I was going to, and Representative Gray, thank you. I was going to talk about dredging, which has been a tremendous source of frustration for um, many of us who have those those waterways and, and access to the um, bay. Um, so thank you for that. I'm glad we're going to we're going to talk about that. And then, um, and I. On the section 64, the Indian River Marina, and I, I know I've asked this before and I apologize, I've probably just forgotten the answer. That simply is language that allows the, the DENREC to pay back to the park endowment. Is that right? That's correct, Senator. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I did remember, there you go. Uh, you know, middle age is, is settling in. And then the last one, uh, the last question is on, on section 77, and this is a follow up on Representative Williams, is a good question. Um, it changes numbers, and I didn't know we were actually going to be doing that. Um, yeah, appropriate to one million to five hundred thousand dollars. Perhaps that's the right number, um, but I do know I have at least uh, uh, at least one member of uh, two members of my, my caucus who feel very very strongly about the debris pits. So I didn't know if if we had just was five hundred. Uh, thank that? you, thank you, Senator. Yeah, that's actually my miss. I had that marked down. That should be on hold as well. Thank you for catching that. Okay, th th thank you. Okay, um, section 77 is now on hold. I have a question from Senator Townsend. Sorry, just a quick, quick comment, good natured, hopefully. Sorry to take time up. Um, point of information there with regard to whether we do have to have our video on. Uh, Senator Benini, obviously, I don't mean to force you to do it. And I, I've missed you as a colleague, although your name rings out throughout my house because in the apples and bananas song that toddlers sing, your name comes up when it goes to Eeples and Beninis. 
Um, so your name has been said many a time in my house all the past few months, but I have missed you. But overall, do we have to have our videos on or is that not a, not a mandate? I, we are broadcasting audio and video. So we would like to have people have their video on. Of course, if you have to walk away or sneeze or something, we understand okay. that you'd have to turn it off. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam, uh, Madam Chair. And I, this is uh, Senator Vini and, and Senator Townsend. I'm tremendously flattered. Uh, and also in a lighter note, uh, Senator Zicola has been looking at a way to mute me for 25 years and he finally found it. Uh, Good but, things come to those who wait. Good things yeah, come to those exactly. who wait. He's been trying to wait. So I, uh, it, is, it is part preference, but also uh, my internet isn't that great. And this was the case when we did the virtual session as well. So if it's all right with the chairs, uh, I will switch to video for the votes to verify that I'm here. If, would that be an, an okay compromise? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, but I'm I but I'm not shaven. It's just for the record, I terrible beard. FYI. Okay, that was what they call TMI, <laughs> Senator Bonini. Fair enough. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt starting section fifty three. Mm -hmm. Section 53, section 54, section 55, section 56, section 57, section 58, section 59, put six, section 60 on hold, put section 61 on hold, adopt section 62, section 63, section 64, section 65, section 66, Hold section 67, adopt section 68, section 69, section 70, section 71, hold section 72, adopt section 73, hold section 74 and 75, adopt section 76, hold section 77, adopt section 78, and adopt section 79. As written. Thank, thank you. Do I have a second? Oh, Walsh. <clears throat> thank you. Um, are there any further comments or questions on the motion? And I don't see any hands raised. So, Lonnie, would you please call the vote, the roll call? Senator Bonini. Yes. Senator Bonini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettijohn? Yes. Senator Pettijohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. yes. Senator Walsh? Walsh? Yes. yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Voting yes. Yes. Rep Representative Heffernan, yes. 12 yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes. All right, picking up on section 80 under Department of Safety and Homeland Security on page 36. Section 80 authorizes Newcastle County to utilize 40 acres at 1205 River Road in Newcastle for establishing and maintaining a law enforcement firing range and driving course. Then on Department of Transportation, we've already voted in section 81. So section 82 says DELDOT structures and facilities for maintaining the highway system are not subject to zoning, subdivision or building code ordinances by any political subdivision of the state. We've also already voted in section 83 and 84. Picking up at section 85, this section makes certain stipulations and requirements if DELDOT determines that construction or reconstruction work should be done between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. Section 86 requires DELDOT to establish and maintain a tree maintenance and replacement program in the city of Wilmington. 
Section 87, suspend DELDOT supplies and road materials program. Section 88 authorizes the DELDOT secretary to use state funds appropriated to the transportation enhancements program to purchase lands to protect the Mill Creek farm property. Section 89 requires two frontage parcels along Route 896 to revert back to the community of Meadow Glen upon completion of the 896 Denny Road project. Section 90 prohibits DELDOT from reopening Wakefield Drive in Newark through Old Baltimore Pike. Section 91 directs DELDOT to account for CTF as cash and the funds are not subject to deauthorization or reallocation. Section 92 requires DELDOT to make every attempt to require right-of-way land to be acquired from the developer-owned land when planning road widening projects. Section 93 prohibits DELDOT from issuing any entrance permit from a certain parcel onto Buck Road until the developer's entrance design conforms to law requirements. Section 94 prohibits DELDOT from issuing any entrance permit from two parcels in Newcastle County onto or from Route 141 or Route 48. Section 95 authorizes the continuation of the Red Light Safety Enforcement Program and requires notification to the incumbent state senator and representative prior to installation of additional locations. Section 96 authorizes DELDOT to engage in two project procurements utilizing a craft training program. Section 97 authorizes DELDOT to enter into agreements for evaluating the cost and benefits of fuel cell technology regarding a parcel on Chestnut Hill Road. Section 98 authorizes DELDOT to spend up to $1 million on rehabilitation of public streets serving industrial parks. Section 99 says DELDOT is to provide an annual financial report of CTF funded projects to the co-chairs by June 30th each year. Section 100 says Delta is to consider all options regarding access issues for the proposed widening of Route 1 between State Route 273 and the William Roth Bridge. Section 101 allows Delta to continue to use CTF for state historical markers within the right of way. Section 102 requires Delta to fund a minimum of $250,000 for research programs and $62,500 for infrastructure research and forums through at the University of Delaware. Section 103 authorizes Delta to contract for the use of the state's right-of-way with Lindy LLC. Section 104 authorizes DELDOT to utilize construction manager and general contractor procurement mechanisms for up to six transportation construction projects. Section 105 says DELDOT is to evaluate and assess a possible collector distributor road modification at Scarborough Road interchange. Section 106 permits the Delaware section of Bow Tree Lane to be included in DELDOT's snow removal reimbursement program. Section 107 authorizes DELDOT to purchase certain parcels along Piles Lane. Section 108 um, was placed on hold earlier with the Secretary. Section 109 allows DELDOT to enter into contractual agreements with the Laurel Redevelopment Corporation for CTF funds. Section 110 states that general, the General Assembly desires not to vacate the bridge or old Corbett Road, bridge 1-424. Section 111 authorizes DELDOT to defer principal and interest payments to be made by the Diamond State Port Corporation through FY20. And then Section 112 was also placed on hold earlier with the Secretary. Section 113 is a new section this year, and this directs DELDOT to sell 110 South French Street in Wilmington to the current lessee at the fair market value as determined by an appraiser. Proceeds will go to the Transportation Trust Fund. Take a break there. Are there any questions or um, comments from committee members? I see a question from Senator Brian Townsend. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know if it goes to the level of putting on a hold, but section 102, the research programs, um, wanted to confirm whether or not we, you know, we could amend that so that we get the results of the research or if just DELDOT can make a point to circle back with a summary of what kinds of research is being completed and how it's being applied. I think we should put it on hold. <laughs> I think that- That's a great um, question. <laughs> Senator Townsend, I think we should put section 102 on hold. If there are no further questions, Madam Chair, um, I would like to make a wait, motion. Wait, wait, wait. You got one? Yes, we do. Senator. I see Senator Bonini. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize, Senator Zicola. So, no, don't uh, apologize. 
Paul just my beard. So it's uh, Section 95, uh, the red light safety enforcement. But just to just to clarify, um, there's not there are no new red light safety cameras, revenue bearing safety cameras that don't go through the Dell dot process that we established a few years ago. Is that correct? All right, because I, I, I think one of the things that our committee did that I'm super proud of is we required uh, anyone who wanted to put up uh, red light cameras or whatever to, to make, quite frankly, to keep them from just making money to make sure that it was just for safety. They, they had to go through a Dell dot process and it had to be certified that yeah, in fact, it was for safety. And I just, I just wanna make sure that is in fact still the case. We can certainly circle back with the secretary and follow up. Okay. Yeah, I can't imagine it's not, but I just, just, just to be, just to be clear. And then- Do you want the, that section on hold? No, it's not necessarily hold. If we could just get that, get that information. Thank you, Madam Chair. And then the last piece, and I apologize, I should probably know what this is, but on, on section 113, who is the leasee and what piece of property is that? Senator Bernini, I'm checking with OMB right now. Thank you. Okay, we just need to do a little research and then we will get back to you on that one as well. Great, thank you. Do you want that on hold, Senator Bernini? No, no, that's all right, Madam Chair. If I could just, I'm sure I actually, you know, have been told, I just would like that information. Thank you. I don't see any um, other questions or comments from committee members. So we have a motion, Senator Song. Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion. We adopt as written section 80, section 82, section 85, section 86, section 87, section 88, Section 89, Section 90, Section 91, Section 92, Section 93, Section 94, Section 95, Section 96, Section 97, Section 98, Section 99, Section 100, Section 101, put on hold Section 102, adopt Section 103, Section 104, Section 105, Section 106, Section 107, hold Section 108, adopt Section 109, Section 110, Section 111, hold Section 112, and adopt Section 113 as written. Back up. Awesome. Are there any other questions? I don't see any. Hands raised. Um, Lonnie, could you please call the roll? Senator Benini? Yes. Senator Benini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. And I got my binder today and it was sent out on the 9th for a one day mail. Excuse me. Double check here. It was sent out on uh, where we may here the, the ninth for one eight for, for one day mail. I'm sorry, the eighth. So it should have been here the ninth, but it arrived on the eleventh. So thank you very much, Ruth Ann. And uh, no, it was not your fault. It didn't get here. Thank you. I'm well, voting. Well, today's the tenth, though. The eleventh, tenth. Well, there you go. I'm always <laughs> ahead and never a day late. Thank you. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative yes. Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative yes. Heffernan. Yes. 
Yes. 12 yes. Motion, Motion carries. All right, so picking back up with section 114, which is under the Department of Agriculture. The first section here is regarding farmland preservation. And we'd like to place this section on hold for a number of updates next week. Section 115 is regarding the farmland preservation report. This requires a report to the committee on current program and property value variations. Section 116 under the Fire Prevention Commission authorizes a reimbursement of up to $7,500 each for the fire school and certain fire companies for rescue tools replacement. Section 117 under Delaware National Guard authorizes the Delaware National Guard to use design build to construct a combined support maintenance shop at the River Road training site in Newcastle. Section 118 authorizes Delaware National Guard to use minor capital improvement funding for certain projects. Section 119 authorizes Sussex County a certain Sussex County parcel to be sold and proceeds of the sale to be deposited in, into the general fund. Section 120 under Delaware State University, the Burning Convocation Center. This says the Capital Improvements Committee accepts the Delaware Convocation Center feasibility study and will work toward exploring funding options to build the facility. Section 121 under Delaware Technical and Community College appropriates funding for the college-wide asset preservation program and allows such funding to be used for the acquisition of computer hardware and software. Section 122 under Department of Education requires each school district to notify the Department of Education of its intended use for each school and administrative office building by September 30th of each year. Section 123 requires 50% of the land purchase state share amount be budgeted to be returned to the state on any land that is donated to a school district. Section 124 is regarding minor capital improvements for school districts and we'd like to place this section on hold for a number of updates. Section 125 for Dickinson High School makes the Red Clay School District equalization funding contingent upon the Dickinson High School lighted football field being used at night only for Dickinson home games and band practice and the district must maintain the fencing and trees between the high school and the community of Montclair. Section 126 authorizes Department of Education to transfer funding between major capital construction projects within respective school districts. Section 127 says if a school district financial position report shows less than one month of carryover or projections show the district will not be able to satisfy local payroll obligations, the director will be in coordination with the education secretary and control general is authorized to conduct a review. Section 128 requires all school districts receiving state capital funds to use standard bid and contract documents. Section 129 prohibits any state agency or municipality from using Milford School District property for any type of additional access without approval from the district. Section 130 reclaims a portion of the Brandywine School District's parcel in Claymont to convey to the Brandywine Community Resource Council to continue operation of the Claymont Community Center. Section 131 makes the Brandywine Community Resource Council liable for the payment of surveys or transaction costs related to the property transfer for the Claymont Community Center. Section 132 authorizes the Smyrna School District to transfer non-obligated funds from the Clayton Intermediate School Project to be used for repairs for roofing systems at Smyrna Elementary, John Bassett Intermediate, and the Thomas Clayton Building. Section 133 authorizes the Newcastle County Votec District to transfer non-obligated funds from the Howard High School Project for use on HVAC, keyless access, and security cameras in the 1927 building. Section 134 authorizes the Caesar Rodney School District to acquire land by in-kind exchange of district-owned land. Section 135 authorizes the Newcastle County Votech School District to transfer non-obligated funds from the Hodgson High School and Del Castle High School roof replacement projects to use an alternative capital projects. Section 136 authorizes Department of Health and Social Services to transfer a subdivided portion of a parcel to the Indian River School District for construction of a new Howard T. Ennis School. Section 137 regarding City of Wilmington Education Initiatives, I'd like to place this section on hold for updates. Section 138 authorizes Newcastle County Votech to transfer funds from Howard High for construction of athlete fields in Kirkwood Park. Section 139 authorizes Christina to negotiate directly and enter into lease agreements for space at Albert Palmer and Pulaski Schools. Section 140 authorizes Apoquimic to enter into public private initiatives for an aquatics complex on Fairfield campus. Section 141 authorizes voluntary school assessment funds to be used for minor capital improvement projects. 
Section 142 says all bonds issued by the state are determined to be within all debt and authorization limits of the state. Section 143 says if any provisions of this act are inconsistent with other general or local laws, the provisions of this act shall be controlling. Section 144 says if any section or provision of this act is held invalid by a court, such judgment is confined to that section or provision and does not affect the remainder of the act. Section 145 says the act takes effect in accordance with the provisions of state law. Are there um, any questions or comments from committee members? I don't see hands, but you can tell me right now. Going once, going twice. Um, Senator Sokola. Madam Chair, at this time I'd like to make a motion that we adopt as written sections 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, put on hold section 124 until we get the minor cap numbers. Section 125, section 126, section 127, section 128, section 129, section 130, section 131, section 132, section 133, section 134, section 135, section 136, put on hold section 137, adopt section 138, Section 139, Section 140, Section 141, Section 142, Section 143, Section 144, and Section 145, as written. Are there, are there any um, questions or comments on the motion? I don't see any right here. Um, you need a second. Do I have a second? I was second. supposed to say that next. Second. And I would like to call on Ms. Lonnie Dye to read the roll call. Madam Chair. Representative Ramon has a question. Ma Madam Chair, if an item comes up in all of these that um, I would potentially perceive as a conflict of interest for myself, do I have to refrain from releasing them in bond or what would I do? Should he abstain? Or would I put that item on hold? Or I mean, I'm just looking for guidance. Um, I can just abstain from this particular portion, I guess. You, you could put one section on hold and then we'll come right back and you could abstain from that section. If well, like. I would I would very much appreciate that if, you, if I could vote on all of them, but uh, the one uh, uh, section 140 and then you all vote and I abstain. Yes, yes, let's, let's put you. temporarily on hold section 140. I uh, amend my motion to uh, put on section 140 on hold and we need a second for that also. Second. Okay, thank you. We have, um, this is the entire motion except for section 140 is on hold and I would like Ms. Lonnie Dye to read the roll call. Senator Benini? Yes. Senator Benini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon? Yes. Representative Ramon, yes. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. Senator Walsh, yes. yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. 12 yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, Senator can I Sokola? make, yes. can I make a motion that we now adopt section 140 as written? Second. 
Adisha. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Ms. Lani Dai to read the roll call. Senator Benini? Yes. Senator Benini, yes. Representative Brady? Yes. Representative Brady, yes. Senator Brown? Yes. Senator Brown, yes. Representative Gray? Yes. Representative Gray, yes. Representative Osinski? Yes. Representative Osinski, yes. Senator Pettyjohn? Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Representative Ramon? I would abstain as a perception of a conflict of interest. Representative Ramon, abstain. Senator Townsend? Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Senator Walsh? Yes. Senator Walsh, yes. Representative Williams? Yes. Representative Williams, yes. Senator Sokola? Yes. Senator Sokola, yes. Representative Heffernan? Yes. Representative Heffernan, yes. 11 yes, one abstain. The motion passes. Senator Benini, I do have a follow-up um, on your question about the lessee from section 113. So it is a company called Corporation Services Company. Thank you. Thank you. That completes the reading of boilerplate epilogue. So, so, and we are done. We could adjourn and we won't need to come back tomorrow, correct? Okay, very good. Um, uh, is there any other per people who had a comment or a question? Otherwise, I will move to adjourn. Oh, wait. I see that Senator Dave Sokola has a comment. You're muted, Dave. <laughs> I need a mouse this time. <laughs> this doesn't work very well. Um, I just want to thank the committee members for your uh, perseverance and for your willingness to be flexible. Um, I think this is a process that does need to be open and transparent and inclusive. And under the circumstances, we're a little bit limited in how uh, transparent we can be, but uh, this is a, a good faith effort. Um, it is clearly unique times and I've been around a while and, and um, you can often say things are, are a little different, but this time is really unique. Uh, and I think uh, I, I don't want to let today pass without uh, acknowledging what, what happened at noon. Uh, we had members of all four caucuses at what I think was one of the most important press conferences uh, that I've been part of in my 30 years in office. I uh, take my hat off to Senator Brown for your work on bringing all of that together. Uh, and I think that uh, it's important that we work hard, we work well together. Um, you know, I, I'll stand, I'll march, I'll kneel, and today I did sweat <laughs> with uh, you, and I, I'm more than happy to do that uh, whenever and wherever. So thank you very much. And um, I also have Senator Bernini with a comment, and then I would like to make a comment. Uh, th thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And just it, not to resolve this right now, but I know we've had discussions in our caucus. Senator Pettyjohn, please jump in if, if I'm missing something. But uh, the bond bill has a long history of, of uh, bipartisanship. I think, you know, I've said this numerous times publicly, I think over the years that the, the bond bill has been the most bipartisan uh, committee that we have. And I think that's a wonderful tradition. Um, but I do, I, I think we have the discussions in our caucus and, I, and perhaps in the Republican House caucus as well. There are many um, subcommittees of the bond bill uh, or reports to the chairs or all those kind of things that do not reflect uh, representation from the minority caucus. And, uh, and I think, again, and, and I want to be perfectly clear, this is not self-serving. I absolutely should not be that person. But uh, I, I think we should at least think about including a member of the uh, minority uh, representation in the, in the bond bill in those committees, in those notifications, et cetera. Certainly understand the majority uh, uh, caucus and the chairs and everything will, of course, still have a voting majority to work with. But I think that would be 
And I think that would be helpful because I know a few times, I think, and, and Senator Pettyjohn, please jump in here. But I think a few times members of our caucus were, were a little surprised that, about information and that, you know, and if we had been at the table, it, we might have been able to, to avoid some misunderstandings. So I was going to just bring it up while we had a few minutes since we finished early. And, uh, and again, this is not a request to change the political balance in any, in any way. Um, uh, but I, 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 do, I do think that would be great if we could have uh, members of the Republican caucus on some of these uh, committees and uh, notifications. Thank you, um, Senator Bonini. I have a comment from Representative Kim Williams. So I turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to thank the controller and the staff for all that they do for us and for Deb and, and Dave for being good leaders. And I've enjoyed working with my colleagues. This is my second year. So it's been an enjoyable uh, committee to work with. And uh, I agree with Senator Benini about um, how the Republicans and Democrats all express our opinions, but we all get along and we listen and we learn from each other. So thank you. And um, what I would like to say is I would also like to thank the, C the Controller General, um, our senior analyst, Ruth Ann Jones, our OMB staff, um, including our OMB director, Michael Jackson, and all our DTI staff for helping us be able to break ground and do this via Zoom. I think it went really well. And I also echo Senator Scola that I am so glad we were able to do our lunch break and be able to attend the press conference because I am in complete support of the legislation introduced by our Delaware Legislative Black Caucus. And I know that we are all standing together to do the right thing, but thank you all for um, making this such a smooth process. And if I have no other comments, which I don't, I move that we adjourn till the, till, Till the 18th, June 18th. Thank you.